light space still has to happen though. Good. Now I'm going to ask for a circle. He likes doing it. I want there to be some positive circling happening here. I want to make sure I can ask for it and that it doesn't only happen when he feels like doing it. And there's no reason not to improve our circles. Maybe do a little bit of fitness training. What do you think, buddy? So I'm just observing him right now. How big is his circle? Does he pull on the rope? Wow. Does he go faster, slower? Does he maintain the trot or does he keep breaking to walk? How is he actually moving in his body? Is he asking me questions? Is he looking kind of robotic? And I look at specific things. Hi, nice to see you. We're actually still going that way. We're going that way. That way. That's where your circle is. And I look, of course, because I can't help it, at his posture, how he's using his muscles, where is he tense. So he's a little bit tense in his back. And we mainly see that because his neck is short and up. And his hind legs, like if you look at his hoof prints, his front legs are taking bigger steps than his hind legs, and his hind hoofs are not coming anywhere near stepping into his front hoofs, hoof prints, the ones that his front hoofs are just leaving. That's called tracking up, when their front or their hind feet can make it to the front foot hoof print. And then what we really like is when they overtrack a little bit, because they have to have a really loose back to be able to swing that far forward with their hind leg at each stride. Oh, hi. Yes. Would you like to go that way? Over there. Yeah. This is a nicer circle. So I'm not picking on him about any of these things. I'm just noticing them because those are the areas where I can help him function better physically as well as respond better to the training. He sure doesn't like it when he misses something and gets a phase four. So I just gave him a tap on his belly because he kind of went, but he also kind of angled in toward me. And I don't want him as a habit thinking it's okay to crowd the person in the middle because I know that you guys don't want that. And I mean, nobody wants that, but some people don't care. <laughs> and I'm also noticing, I'm not really trying to fix anything right now. I'm just practicing to see like, does he share my idea? Like it's taking phase four to get most of these and then occasionally a, a phase two. Not because he's not connected, so he's totally connected to me. When the circle was his idea, he connected to it quickly. When the circle's my idea, we're not connecting there until I'm like, say it twice, you know? Nothing wrong with that, but I would like to say something quietly one time and have him hear me and understand me and be willing to go because that's how I want to live my life. All right, let's try this end again, Rio. Come here. Let's try. That's what the reset's for. I did it. I quit. And then he went. <laughs> if I didn't reset, I could have spanked him two more times before he went. Mm -hmm. And that would have been excessive pressure. And it wouldn't help him think his way through it, right? It's like I ask him something, and then if I keep harping on it before he even has a chance to compute it, it doesn't help. That's one of my favorite things about using the reset. Also trying various ways to stop the circle like I'm not doing a hind quarter yield most of the time I'm just kind of trying to get his attention with a little draw Hi. or a little smooch noise because I use a kiss noise to call my horses um, just one 
which is really handy. Hmm. And it's just one way that I don't have to do a gesture, but he still feels the like friendly game over snuggle time call. Peak moment of momentum. Okay, cool. That was interesting. He complained a little bit about me touching his bum. Did you see it? Not very much, and he didn't actually intend to push on me. He just let me know that he was like, hey, don't you don't need to touch my butt. He thought that the way he left on that circle was perfectly adequate. And he doesn't care to hear that my idea was a little different. But again, he didn't pull or anything. So he didn't tell me at all, like, see ya, I don't want to do this. He just expressed his opinion, which I'm totally happy to see because now I know what to do, which is try the whole thing again. Oh, good job. Yeah. So what a lot of people do when they see their horse, it wasn't really negative, but when he expressed his opinion and he was like, don't touch me with that stick, is they'll either say, I will touch you with that stick, and they smack him again, like the wipe that look off your face action, mm. right? Or they go, ooh, he didn't like that. I better not do that again. And then he's like, that's right. We're going to do it my way. Not that there's anything wrong with your way, but I want it to be our way. So I'm going to give him the choice. He can either give me that kind of depart, which I really like, because it was light and energetic and on a light phase and out there with no thought of crowding my space. Or he can do it his old way, in which case I will just touch his butt with my phase four and he can complain about that all he wants out there. And if anything, I'll laugh at him because it's adorable. <laughs> Shall we? And that moment where he complained a little bit, that's, a, that's kind of a, an invitation to argue right? Which is a dominance thing. If he can get me to argue with him, now we're two geldings. I'm not a lead mare anymore. And there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with a horse there, but I just don't want to position myself there, both for myself and also for you. In your herd culture here, you do not want them thinking that you're a gelding they can push on, right? No. Not ever. So we have to be establishing that. And one of the most powerful ways to establish that is that I simply will not rise to an invitation to argue. Nor will I back off from saying my piece. But the two things don't really have a lot to do with one another, you know? My piece, your piece, our piece. <laughs> that time he took off kind of casually. He was still in front of me by the time I slowly lifted my stick. So I let it drop on him, pretty much just with what gravity did to my arm. And I'm not surprised that he had exactly the same thing to say about this one as about the other one. He bucked about as much bigger this time as I let my arm fall, right? So last time was a lighter flick, this time was a, a, more of a thump feeling. And then he thumped back up. Normal horse behavior, that was normal horse behavior. No point in me saying anything about it other than giving him the chance to repeat. Nice. There's no chance for argument if he goes with enough oomph that he's not still there when I feel like dropping my arm. Come back, let's do it again. And repetition is the key here to kind of prove to him that no, I'm not gonna rise to the argument. Yes, I am gonna use the stick if I look like I'm gonna use the stick. And you do your part and we'll be good. And even if he doesn't do his part, we'll be good. <laughs> Enjoy it again. I'm not being too picky. Like I said before with the backup, we're going to work on one variable at a time. Right now we're simply working on the depart moment, the send. Even though half the time he's picking up an outside lead or he's cross firing or he's, you know, not doing a round circle. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what he's thinking? 
What are you thinking? Hmm, cool. Anytime I have to use the stick though, I mix in friendly just to triple check that we're still cool. And a lot of times finishing with the stick even when they already went is a good thing because I think they get then satisfaction of knowing that they got out of the way or that they made it far enough fast enough, you know? And if we pull it back, I think then they don't know what we were gonna do because we changed it midway through. Are you feeling work, buddy? You're doing good work. Exercise. Good. Let's try the other way because a lot of times fixing his opinion about one side doesn't necessarily translate. Let's see what he thinks about getting touched over here. This side was sort of his better side anyway, but we'll see. Organize myself, open the door for a circle that way, close the door for this side. <laughs> That was creative. <laughs> Again, barely a pull on the rope, but definitely express his opinion. Rio's the kind of horse, if you try to like shut down his opinion, I think all hell would break loose and he would argue and fight and actually get mad. But when he's allowed to share his opinion, and even that doesn't make me argue or discipline or anything, he's gonna be like, what? Like, why did I do that? If I, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do you any good, except it might have felt good in your body. Are you ready? The door is open over here. He's like lifting withers first when he does those. It's cute. But he's doing it with a little bit of tension. If he could do that without tension, it would be so cool. Not that it's not gorgeous, but you know what I mean. Come back. because he got to go like, ah, oh, are you hitting, you know? Like he thought maybe I was aiming at him with the stick or something, and he got to experience that actually I wasn't. I was just finishing what I was doing over there. And again, his little tissy fit, or whatever you want to call it, doesn't influence me. It doesn't change my energy feeling. It doesn't change our, how much I love him. It doesn't change my opinion of him. Like 